in this video we're going to look at project crashing for um, project networks focusing on single activity reductions and um, looking mainly at what we call the table method. Firstly what is crashing? So when we say we're going to crash a project network what we're doing is looking to reduce the duration of one or more activities so that the overall completion time is reduced. So this can be achieved in several ways and it depends on the conditions provided in the question. We could be asked to simply reduce one single activity and therefore looking to reduce just one of the critical activities to achieve the greatest impact on the completion time and that's what we'll look at in this video. In the next video I'll be looking at reducing multiple activities. So that's where we can reduce usually a um, specific number of activities by a certain amount and looking at combinations of critical and non-critical activities to achieve the greatest saving or impact on that completion time. And then the final layer is when we then have to work within a budget. So usually that is um, a cost per reduction and looking at the most cost effective way to achieve the best outcome possible. So they um, tend to be the final questions, the last layer of that application. Generally speaking, when you're asked to reduce a single activity or do any reductions at all, you will have done other components of a question. So you may have already identified the critical path by doing your forward and backward scanning as part of the question. And in that case, you may choose to identify what is the best uh, reduction to make by looking at your critical path. So when you are looking just to do a single activity reduction, any one activity on the critical path will have a direct impact when there is a single critical path. And then it's a case of checking which activity, or which of those critical activities should you reduce um, in order to get the greatest impact, the greatest saving on that finishing time. So there may be other restrictions or conditions within the question, but from a general sense, if we look at this um, network here, if we're completing a forward and backward scan, so quickly just working our way through that, remembering our setup is to put these double boxes on each of our vertices so that we can track our forward and our backward scanning, our earliest start times and later start times from the beginning. We start at zero, if I travel along activity A, that takes four, plus activity C is five, we have to consider both C and D coming into that point. So going back to the beginning, zero plus the duration of B, three, plus the duration of D, seven, so that gives me ten at this point. So E can't commence until both C and D are completed, so that means we have to start at ten. And then finally, 10 plus 14, 24 is our completion time. So working backwards so that we can get our critical path and identify those critical activities. So from here, C, 10 minus 5, 5 minus 4 for A brings me back to 1. Going back to 10 minus 7 for D gives me 3, minus 3 for B, 0, meaning I have 0 in the box there. Finally, my critical path would be B, D, E. So what that means is if I'm going to reduce one activity on that critical path, my options are B, D, or E. And if I'm looking to find which will have the greatest impact, I basically then, if there are no other restrictions, what I think about is what happens if I completely eliminate that particular activity. So that is if B was no longer um, there, but was a dummy activity. So it had a duration of zero. So if I track that forward, that would mean I would have a time of seven as activity D finishes, but I would have to move forward with my nine from the other path giving me an overall completion time of 23. So B would only save me one, um, that one unit off my finish time. D, if I went back and tried the same thing again, so tracking back, 
if activity D was worth zero, so then I have three plus zero, uh, three at this point. But again, nine would have to carry forward and I'd only save one unit again. If activity D, uh, sorry, E was completely reduced, was zero, then my new completion time would be 10, meaning I would save 14 units off my completion time. And so therefore giving me the best possible outcome. And so that method is generally called the by inspection method, where you're checking each of those um, different possibilities, but you're just focusing on reducing a critical activity. Okay, it is the critical activity that is going to have a definite impact. If I reduce A or C, because of this point where I come in, where there is a common um, point where two paths come together, and I always have to move forward with the largest predecessor, okay, that 10, anything reduced on A and C is not going to have an impact at all. So it's not going to alter anything. We can see though that B or D didn't have a significant impact, whereas E definitely did. So things that operate in isolation tend to um, be your best option, but it really is a case of checking each of the possibilities. In the case where you have multiple critical paths, reducing any single activity in isolation may not have a direct impact on the overall completion time. So what you need to be looking for, if there are multiple critical paths, then it is the activities that are common to both or all of those paths that you need to concentrate on, and they will be the ones that do have an impact. So here I've done the forward and backward scan on this graph. And if we look, we can see from the start, there are two options where I had the latest start time of zero. So firstly, if I traveled along A and then C, and then F, and then H. So that is one critical path, A, C, F, and H. The second critical path, traveling along B, E, and also H, gives me that same um, outcome of a completion time of 17. So here, if I was to reduce activity A, C, F, B or E in isolation, they, they are not going to have an impact on that completion time. Because if activity B was reduced, then that pink pathway would not be the longest from start to finish, so therefore would no longer be the critical path. But the green pathway through A, C, F and H would still be the critical path, so no reduction in that completion time. So that tells us that our option that we need to look at is reducing H. So here there's only one activity common to both. And if I was to reduce H, um, then I definitely will have an impact. Now, if the question is then asking, what should you reduce H by? You are just aiming to match the next best pathway in the network. And that's where the table method can be really useful um, and a really efficient way of being able to see what that is and how much to reduce by. So we're going to have a look at that now. The table method for project crashing, as I said, helps you keep track of, of what reductions can be made and the impacts that they can be made. So the way that we set it up is to set up a table um, which contains all of the possible pathways from the start to the finish. So you can see here I've got this table ready to go. And so I've just simply gone from the beginning, working my way through um, the graph, the network, from start to finish, and then adding the durations of that path. So we can see that first one, A, G, H there. And then I do the same thing, mapping each of the possible pathways and in this case I have four possible different pathways from start to finish. So we can see them all listed in the table and as well as what I tend to call their original completion time. So that's the completion time without any reductions that have been made. 
Now note here, I'm not in this method needing to do a forward and backward scan to identify the critical path. And this is a way that you can identify the critical path um, regardless of what the previous questions are asking you to do. What this method doesn't allow you to see is any of that special information about earliest and latest start times. So I would only use this if I had a, a particularly challenging crashing question or the question was solely about critical path and crashing. So here in my original times, the longest um, original time is the current critical path. So our current critical path is A, F, sorry, A, E, F and I. And so what we're going to do is see um, in this question, we're being told that A, C and F can all be reduced by a maximum of two weeks. And what single reduction should be applied to achieve the best reduction in overall completion time? So before I even begin, I know that activity C is not going to provide any reduction. The reason being is because C does not appear in this critical path. So I don't need to actually check what happens when I reduce C. What I've done in the other columns of the table is just to set up um, if I'm going to reduce activity A, so I've just put it as A minus two weeks because that's the maximum amount I'm allowed to do. So if I now concentrate just on activity A, I'm going to look at the paths and any path that contains activity A, I'm going to subtract two from the original time. So the first path there, AGH, originally was 12, but I'm taking two off for activity A, so that comes down to 10. The second path, AEFI, also contains activity A, so subtract two from the original 15 gives me 13. The third path, BFI, doesn't contain A, so this will have no impact on that time, so it remains at the original of 13. And finally, CDI also doesn't contain activity A, so no change, it remains at a time of 14. And so again, the longest um, path is your critical path, so the greatest time is now the critical path. So by reducing A by two units, I've actually only saved one when I compare to the original. Okay, so A would allow me to save one unit. I'm going to check again with F. And so again, I'm just looking at the activities that contain, uh, sorry, the paths that contain activity F. So the first one doesn't, the second one does, the third one does. So that means the first pathway does not contain activity F, so it remains at its original time. So you're always referring back to the original time, okay, because activity A no longer is reduced. We're just concentrating on F. Second path does contain um, F, so 15 minus the 2 gives us 13 again. The third pathway, BFI, contains F, so I can take 2 from 13, that gives me a time of 11. And finally, CDI, this one also doesn't contain F, so remains at the original time of 14. And so again, the longest time. 14 is our new completion time and our new critical path. Again, comparing that back to the original, I have again saved one unit. So here, what is the best reduction, single reduction? Well, we have the option either A or F. And both of those will save us um, just one unit each. Let's look at a second example of this table method. So here again, we've got our project network um, and what single reduction should be applied to achieve 
the best reduction in overall completion time. So again, we're looking at that single reduction. So our first step is to note down all the possible paths from the start to the finish. So firstly, I can go B, G, I, J. And the length of that path is 17. Second one, I could go B, then the dummy, and across F and J. So remember when you're noting that down, um, you don't need to write the dummy edge in. And that pass uh, will be 18. Next, I could again go B and down the dummy, and then C, E, H, J. And the length of that path is 19. Next, I could come across A, F, and J. And that path is 14. And then finally, F, C, E, H, J. So that's E, H, J, uh, 15. And so now, thinking about what is my current critical path? So the current critical path, 19, which is running through B, the dummy edge, C, E, H, and J. So they are my values that I should be concentrating on in order to find possible reductions. So if I was to reduce B by the total amount that it currently has, would be five. C, the most I could reduce that by is two. E, the most would be seven. H, the most would be four. And J, the most would be one. So where I have no other conditions or restrictions placed or no other information given, I just simply want to reduce it by as much as possible. So that's why I'm going by the actual duration of the activities. And so here again, I do tend to highlight what I'm doing so I can keep track. Okay, so everywhere there's a B, I'm going to subtract five. So from the first path, five off 17 brings that one down to 12. Five from 18 would come down to 13. Five from 19, would come down to 14. There's no B in AFJ, so it stays at the original 14. And again, no B in our final path, so that would stay at 15. So our critical path will be the longest time. So our saving there, comparing to the original, if I was to reduce activity B, I could save uh, four. Now let's look at activity C. So any path where there is a C present, I can subtract two. So there's no C in the first one, so it remains at the original 17. No C in the second path, stays at the original 18. We have a C in our third path, so I subtract two from the original. So 19 minus two will bring it down to 17. No C in the fourth path, so stays at the original 14. And finally, there is a C in the fifth path, so 15 minus 2 gives me 13. Again, looking for our, our uh, largest value there of 18. So if I was to reduce C, the best thing I could do, comparing, remember, always to the original critical path, I could save 1. If I now look at activity E, so I have activity E in the third and the fifth path again. So moving through a bit more quickly, the first path, no change. The second path, no change. The third path, I can minus seven from the original. Fourth path, no change. And fifth path, I can minus seven from the original brings me down to eight. 
the longest or the greatest value there. 18 is my new critical path, which means I have again been able to save one. Now looking at activity H, so again we've got H in that third path and fifth path. So no change for the first pathway, no change for the second. The third one, so 19 minus the duration of 4, you bring me down to 15. No change for the fourth pathway. And finally for the fifth pathway, 15 minus 4 would give us 11. So again, our longest path there, 18. And so once again with H, I'm able to save 1. Our final option, J. So J appears in every single pathway because it's that last activity um, through which everything must flow to get to the finish. So each of these activities, uh, sorry, pathways will have a reduction of one from their original time. And so here, our longest critical path hasn't actually changed, but we have been able to save one unit there. So overall, the best option out of the ones that we had, um, the best reduction we could make if a single um, activity was to be reduced well, is to save four units of from the overall completion time, bringing it from 19 down to 15. Now the question then may become, how much should you reduce that activity B by? particularly then if you're adding in something to do with cost. So if you're not wanting to waste resources and waste money, um, you only then want to reduce by the amount that you need to. And so what we look at then, if we look at activity B in isolation, because we've now decided it is our best option to save those four units, how much should we reduce it by to be able to hit that new completion time of 15. And so in order to get from 19 down to 15, we would have to subtract um, four units. So instead of the whole five that we originally did, we would only want to subtract. So B by four, reducing B by four. For this final example, I'm going to have a look at something different, but that I can still use the table method for. So this is a style of question that has come up um, a couple of times in the exams now, and it's where we are altering the activities um, within our project network, not necessarily aiming to reduce the completion time. But here you can see we've got a network showing the activities that are needed to finish a particular project and their completion time in days. This project, importantly to note, currently has one critical path. The question is asking to find when a second critical path appears um, in addition to the first, how is that created? So we've got options here where we are looking at increasing some particular activities in isolation or decreasing like we have been with the crashing. So here I set up the table in a similar way that I would for any of my crashing questions. I've listed each of the possible pathways from start to finish and their original completion times. So there are six different pathways through the graph from start to finish and you can see the times there. And so the way I then use the table, because I am looking at a, a single activity in isolation each time. So here where option A talks about increasing D by seven days, I'm representing that in the table as D plus seven. So that means any of the activities, so any of the project network pathways that contain activity D, I'm going to add seven to the original completion time. Firstly, let's just make sure we know what we're targeting. So our current critical path maximum time is 22. So now adding seven and the only pathway is that first one that contains activity D. So 15 plus seven gives me 22. 
no change for the remaining. And so I can just rewrite my original times there, meaning I now have activity B giving me two of those critical cards. So it sounds like at the moment A is going to be my correct answer. But let's just work through the rest so that you can see what I've done and making sure that we haven't missed something. So increasing again, G by one, represented as a G plus one. And then anywhere where we do have a G in the pathway, just the one activity at the bottom. So I'll be adding just one to that final activity. So all the others remain as the original. And the final one becomes 21. So we can see there, we only have one critical path at that 22. Our third option is C, increasing again, I by two. So that's where we've got I plus two. And anywhere where we've got activity I listed, couple of those, I'm going to add two to the original. So no change for the first, no change for the second, plus two for the third, no change for the fourth, plus two for the fifth, and no change for the sixth. So now this has created a new critical path, but it is the only critical path. Option B, decreasing C by one. So this is what we're used to seeing. Subtracting one from any pathway that contains activity C, and we've got three of them there. So first path stays the same, second path stays the same, third path stays the same, fourth path subtracting one, fifth path subtracting one, and sixth path subtracting one. So again, maximum value there 21, only one critical path. Finally, for option E, we're decreasing again h by 2, so h minus 2, and any of our paths that contain h, again just the two of them, so first path stays the same, second path 13 minus 2, so 11, third path no change, fourth path 22 minus 2, fifth path no h, as, yep no h, so stays the same, and final path, no H, stays the same. And again, our highest number, 21. So a new critical path, but no, uh, no second path. It's still it's on its own. So therefore, we can be really confident in saying that A is our best answer there. Increasing the completion time of D by seven days will give us two critical paths. That's it for this video. So ranging from just the simple type where there's multiple um, critical paths and then into something a little bit different. Hopefully that table method is a really solid basis that you can use for your crashing going forward. Good luck.